In this video, I will go over some examples for uh, practicing numerical approach, which is uh, pretty straightforward. Once you understand the graphing approach, the idea is very simple. Um, instead of figuring out the entire graph, you just use a finite number of points to figure out the behavior of a function around the target value of interest. So if you have a calculator, you can uh, do that with a calculator, but uh, we can also use Desmos for that or Excel. And I'm going to show you how. So again, uh, please watch these videos. They're not that long, just 11 minutes, and that will save you some time because as I'm going over some of these examples, I will assume that you have watched this uh, lectures, so I will be uh, brief and um, hopefully you'll listen to me and you'll watch those lectures before watching this video. So let's jump right into the homework and when we have to, we will use the um, Desmos or we don't need, we're not going to use Wolfram Alpha for this, but I have just in case have uh, Excel right over here. So again, looking at this problem uh, just by looking at the numbers what do we learn uh, it seems like as you approach closer to closer to one from the left side the values are getting closer and closer to 0 0.5 and the same thing happens from the right side so it is pretty fair to conclude that the two-sided limit is equal to 0 0.5 however if you really want to see what's going on here I would suggest you to just craft the actual uh, function so square root of x minus 1 over x minus 1 and at 1 we're looking right over here so while the function itself does not exist at 1 the limit does uh, if you want to do this problem analytically well there are ways to simplify it simplify the expression by using the um, it's called rationalizing the numerator technique but uh, Either way, the answer is uh, um, negative, uh, not negative, positive, uh, one half. Now, how I would use Excel to answer this question? Um, I would, let's say, let's say the target value is one, right? So uh, we would start here at one, and how can we get to one? Well, from the left, this is how we go to one, right? Uh, was... um, this is how we go to one from the left. These are my x values, and here I I would produce the output. So the outputs and again from the right side, how would we go? We go like this, uh, something like this, right? So I'm kind of doing what they did, just in my own way here, just kind kind of trying to show you the motivation behind the numerical approach um, well that's good enough right and here I would type the function so in Excel you would type the function by typing the formula Didn't hold up here. Uh, you type the formula by putting the equal sign first and in my formula I'm going to have some something in this parenthesis divided by something in this parenthesis and in this parenthesis I take the square root of my input, which is right here, and I subtract 1, and then I divide it by my input, and I subtract 1. And now all you have to do is just drag this. Notice how as I'm dragging it over the 1, it's going to give me like, hey, you can't divide by 0. And this is exactly why we have to find the limit here, because the function does not exist. And what we see here is that we, we see exactly that, what we need to see. Now, to visualize this, let's graph it. We're going to insert the scatter plot. And when you insert the, this is not the best scatter plot. When you insert the scatter plot, I guess it just doesn't like this division by zero. So let's just remove this right now. And let's insert the, what? Hold on, something's not right here.
Why doesn't it like my uh, scatter plot here? I don't understand how to. Good. Let's just do this. Once again, I'm going to try another scatter plot, and I'm not sure why it's not. That's not. I'm not. I'm actually baffled by this whole uh, Excel not being able to do the scatter plot. What I was hoping to see is basically, you know what? I'm going to take this graph and you know what? Screw Excel. Uh, whatever Excel can do, uh, not whatever Excel can do, but this particular thing. Uh, uh, stuff crunch can do as well. So for computing these values, what do you see? You see these points, right? So right here. Oh, maybe that's what I guess they were showing it. Hold on. Sorry, Excel. Come back. Uh let's try again. I guess it did. No, it didn't. Ah, there it is. Is it? I guess it is, right? This this is it just all the points are clustered so tight together that uh, it's really hard to tell. So sorry, Excel. You, you, you. Um, but yeah, this is the behavior, right? So we can see that the behavior is that. Uh, um, so th that finite number of points does show us enough information about the behavior of this function. So if I turn off this function, we should see that hey, the limit is equal to zero point five over here. Um, and that's the idea behind the numerical approach. Let's continue. Uh, here we have as x approaches to zero. It looks like everything goes to zero, right? So that's a reasonable assumption. Uh, here, you see how as x goes to 25 from the left, it approaches to 0 0.1. As x goes to 25 from the right, it approaches to 0 0.01 oh, as well. Oh, yeah. So that's the right answer. Negative uh, 0.6. So even though they both approach to like some, some number, uh, they actually don't, like there is no pattern here, right? So don't get mixed up. Don't just look at this being equal to this. So there is no pattern here. So the limit here does not exist. And if you actually graph, this is an interesting graph. If you actually graph sine of one over x or one over x squared, uh, you will see some pretty interesting behavior around uh, zero. It looks crazy like that. So we call this the limit does not exist. And that's the graph of it from Desmos. All right, uh, here, on the left side, things goes to zero. On the right side, things goes to 12. So on the left side, the answer is zero. On the right side, the answer is 12. Same problem, kind of. On the left side, things approach to negative 10. On the right side, things approach to negative 27. I don't even need to look at the function. I'm just looking at that table of input output. Uh, here on the left side we have, on the left of 3 we have 3, on the right of 3 we have 36, and the two-sided limit doesn't exist. That has nothing to do with the um, numerical approach, it, this is uh, just the definition, by the definition of a two-sided limit. Here we have uh, left side 24, Right side 11, two-sided limit, does not exist. Left side 75, right side negative 20. Left side negative 18, right side negative 12. And we completed two out of four objectives. Left side is 
negative 3. Right side is 9. Two side is... Uh, yeah. So again, th th this problems kind of inspire you to, like, well, what if I don't have this table? Well, you should understand the value of it, and you should be inspired to create your own when there is a need, if you don't have a graphing device. Of course, if you have a graphing device, you would just graph it and use the graphing approach. So usually we use the numerical approach when graphing device is not available. Uh, like uh, this one. Again, graphing device is available. I am not going to use it. Let's go to my uh, Excel. Um, and here we approach to what? Infinity. And to approach to infinity, we're going to start at 10, go to 100, 1000, 10,000, 100,000, and that's good enough, right? And on the right side, I'm going to type my function. So what's my function? Oof. We have uh, some fraction plus 1 in the denominator of the fraction as 2 plus 4 times my input. And in the numerator of the fraction, we'll have square root of 1 plus 16 of this. Oh, let me finish typing it. 16 of the. Hmm. Sixteen A two. Ah, I have to put times. Sixteen times A two uh, squared. Doesn't make something. Sixteen times A two squared. Yes, I will need this. I will need this parentheses. Yeah. That's it. And so what do we see? We see the behavior. The behavior, the, the pattern is pretty clear. It approaches to uh, 2. So now if we were, well, uh, like, well, it's not cheating. Uh, but it just doesn't serve the purpose of this particular uh, homework. But if we were to graph it, we would see that, um, I mean, we would just see everything we need to see. Uh, and not pretend like we don't have technology. So the limit is clearly two. All right. Uh, same here, right? So we go to infinity. So I can just use the same Excel spreadsheet and just need to retype the function. Uh, the function is negative this plus square root of this squared plus 1 minus 3 and go down and yeah it goes to negative 3 another one so the hardest part here is actually type this formula in Excel um, equals negative square root of 3 times x plus square root of 3 times x squared uh, plus 1 uh, minus 2. And let's go like this. So the answer is negative 2. Now you can say like, well, I, I don't know how to use Excel. I don't want to learn Excel. Well, no worries. Like if you want to just to practice like the numerical approach, you can use Desmos and just come here and literally just do exactly this. Type your function, but don't look at it, right? So type your function. Um, right, type your function, but don't look at it. And now here, just throw some random x values like 10, 20, 30, 40. Oh, look, it just guesses it. So the answer is negative 2. Uh, it even shows you those points somewhere. Oh, they're too far. Oh, yeah, there you go, right? Uh, but if you click on this, you'll be able to see the whole graph. So that would be the appropriate way to handle this. The the lack of desire to learn Excel. And it's not like you have to. So let's do 
let's use Desmos. And once you have these templates, you can save these templates and use them on the homework or use them on the test. Uh, there will be something totally fine. So the answer here is negative. And looks like we're done. We are done with the whole assignment. So this is a computational approach or numerical approach. And if you have any questions about it, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out.